once one of the most striking buildings in the world. In its short life, its distinctive shape has made it an icon for Dubai. Recognized the world over. It's the Burj Al Arab, or Arabian Tower. This is the tallest atrium in the world, 182 meters high. In the baking heat of the desert, one of the ultimate luxuries must be a cool air-conditioned room. Even when temperatures approach 50 Celsius outside, the interior of the Burj Al Arab maintains a balmy 23 degrees. But keeping it this way isn't as simple as you might think. Creating and maintaining an oasis in the desert presented the engineers with a series of challenges right from the very beginning. The real problem is managing the big difference between temperatures inside and outside the hotel. On a hot day, the difference between the two can be 20 degrees Celsius. Temperature differences create pressure differences. In nature, big pressure differences create violent winds, even hurricanes. Pressure differences affect all skyscrapers. They're especially bad in a structure the size of the Burj Al Arab in the desert. It could literally stop people getting in and out of the building. Back on home soil, Professor of Building Engineering Physics Doug King explains why combining air conditioning, a tall building and a scorching desert can stack up big trouble. So these big temperature differences, although they make life nicer inside the building, they can bring big problems. Absolutely. And we're going to demonstrate that with this model, which is a scale model of the atrium at the Birch. I did wonder. It's not as big, is it? No, unfortunately, we couldn't get one that yeah. big in here, so we've had to scale things down a bit. We've got a light bulb at the bottom, which is representing the heat gains from people and from the sun shining in through the windows onto the floor. And we've got about a kilogram of dry ice on a tray at the top, which is representing the cooling effect of the air conditioning system. And the problem is all to do with airflow. An air pellet will show how the air circulates. Heat from people and the sun through the windows on the ground floor cause the air to rise. The air conditioning cools it down, making it more dense, and the air falls. We've got upflow on the one side, and we've got downflow on the other side. Leaving you with a tall column of cold, heavy air surrounded by the hot desert. Which doesn't sound like a problem. I still don't see why the big problem. If the building stays closed, it's not a problem. The problem happens when we've got this big stack of cold air inside. We've got warm air outside, and it's all being held back by the front door. So why don't you open the door and see what happens? Right, there's a door down here. Yeah. Open the door and That's see. That's the one. Okay, so I'll open the door. Ooh, ooh. Yes. What's happening now? See how quickly it's clearing yeah. down. You've got this big column of cold air inside, which is much heavier than the air outside, and it's all being forced out through that little opening. So that's on this scale. You can see it's rushing out. That's not just tumbling yeah. out because I've opened yeah. the door. That's being pushed out. That's right. By this pressure And difference. see how quickly all of that air inside the model has fallen down and pushed the air out through the door. So if that's how it works on this scale, how big a problem does it represent for something the size of Burj Al Arab? Well, for something as big as that atrium, it's 180 metres high. That's an enormous stack of cold air. Very, very dense at the bottom. Opening that door against that pressure is going to be try like trying to list a sack of potatoes. To be more precise, the vast atrium at the Burj Al Arab, combined with the heat of the desert outside, could create the equivalent of 21 bags of sugar pressing against the door. So, 21 kilo weight suspended from a pulley. This then is about as tough as it would be to open the door at the Burj Al Arab. I mean, it's not impossible, but it is a bit of a workout. I don't think you want to work out every time you open the door, especially if you've saved up to book a suite. With the largest atrium in the world, this problem is especially acute for the Burj Al Arab. The unwanted stack effect was first noticed with the rise of the skyscraper. 
Workers in New York and Chicago complained not only of drafts, but that they couldn't even open the doors of their buildings because of pressure differences inside and outside. One solution to the problem is to equalize the pressure inside the building with the pressure outside the building. But that would mean you'd need to equalize the temperature in here with the temperature out there in the desert. You wouldn't be able to heat or cool the building. And I think having the temperature in here hover around the 40 degree mark does rather spoil the whole idea of an oasis in the desert. The hotel might lose a star or two for that. What you need is a means of getting between two areas of different pressure, outside on the street and inside the hotel, without allowing the pressures to equalize. There was a different solution, and it came from something inspired by a 19th century French coal mine. In 1839, French mining engineer Jacques Triget overcame the problem of moving between two areas of different pressure in waterlogged coal mines. He created the world's first airlock. This is how Triget's system worked. This is my waterlogged ground. Well, it's a glass, but you know what I mean. Here's my mine shaft. If I just sink a mine shaft into waterlogged ground like this, well, it's just full of water at the bottom. Nobody can work down there. The answer to that, fairly simple, seal it at the top. That stops the air getting out, which means the water can't get in. That's all well and good until you need to open the top to let your workers go down the mine. Then it floods with water again. The answer to that one, establish your dry mine shaft, fit an airlock at the top, let your workers in. Then once they're safely in, seal it behind them. Everything stays dry, everybody's happy. What they needed at the Burj Al Arab was some sort of airlock so they could separate the pressure inside the hotel from the pressure outside. Sounds complicated like something of a space station. But in fact, I've just been through it. It's a revolving door. Revolving doors are designed in such a way that there's never a direct opening to the street. The inside is sealed from the outside, even when the door is spinning. First used in Rector's Restaurant in Times Square in New York in 1899, its tagline was always open, always closed because the door keeps a seal even when you go through it. This makes the sort of airlock that's needed to stop the big outrush of air that would happen because of the stack effect. Now everyone who can afford it can come and go in comfort. Starting on BBC Four now, the secret life of the national grid. Next on BBC Two, we're swimming with sharks in Britain's secret seas. Then at nine, it's time to run the beautiful game as a real business. Lord Sugar tackles football.